you to go back to the time when you were considering applying to the Stanford Graduate School of Business. A school located here in the heart of Silicon Valley. Surely one of the things you were considering was the potential to launch your own business after graduation. Well, you're not alone. In fact, 16% of graduating MBAs go on to become entrepreneurs after they graduate here from Stanford. Fast forward to where we are today. Many of us in this room, myself included, were just a few weeks away from graduating. And of course, as you're thinking about your options for after the GSB, there are probably many things that you're considering. Maybe you have a mountain of student debt that you're figuring out, how can you pay it down? Or if you're an international student, perhaps visas are top of mind because you want to stay here in the US. Potentially, you even have a job offer that you're seriously considering. But if you're also like me, you have that heartstring inside of you that's gently pulling and nagging at you, reminding you why you came here to Stanford, because you wanted to be an entrepreneur. The difference, however, between you being able to potentially start your business, or not at all, relies heavily on your ability to get funding. In fact, in a recent survey, six out of 10 new entrepreneurs cite funding as one of the critical issues. They say it's one of the things that keeps them up at night. As we've learned here at the GSB at business school, cash flow is the lifeblood of any business. It can be the difference between success and failure. It provides you with the opportunity to hire the right people, build your first prototype, launch your first website, or potentially even provide yourself with a fair living wage. And your ability to get that funding comes down on your ability to make the pitch. I'm very excited to be sharing with you something that we've been working on for quite some time, which is how you can do the art of the pitch. Now here to tell you more about our team and why we're the team to make the pitch is Yen. So with over 25 years of experience in pitching, so now we are the best team here to present you <laughs> the art of pitching. We are from GSB, MBA students and MSACers. So we understand our market, which is a GSB student, you. We all inspired to be an entrepreneurs after graduation. We have been taking Startup Garage, Lean Launchpad, all these entrepreneurial classes. And we have already go through this process, talking with investor, so we understand how important it is to make the pitch and how hard it is to get the funding. And also, <coughs> our team is very solid and diverse. Carl has been sitting on the investment board. Gabriel is a communication guru. Yeah, myself, I have experience in branding and strategy, while Saurabh has a background in engineer. And most of all, we embrace the same culture. We have a shared vision, which is change life, change organization, and change the world. So by now, you may already understand how important a team for the pitch. So when the investor they are investing in company, not only for the next big idea, but they are looking for the next big team. Mm. And how you can demonstrate your team is the best to solve this problem during the pitch. So first, you need to share, we have a coherent vision. We have to share the passion to the problem we want to solve. And second, we want to demonstrate the team have a diverse competencies. We have domain expertise and industry knowledge. Third, we need to communicate openly to really make sure the team has a good team dynamic. Research shows 65% of startups fail in the first year because of the team dynamic. And the last, very important, we need to demonstrate this commitment. So our team is all in for that. So now, you know our team is the best for the art of pitching, and I will let Kyle to share with you the journey of ideas. Thank you, Jan. So at a high level, we think of taking an investor through a pitch as a journey. 
And this is actually a borrowed concept from leading strategic communications expert, Bert Alper. Uh, so that lends some credibility to this. Uh, but we think of the initial stage as first building curiosity. So you want the investors to know what your business is about. Second, we want them to build into an understanding. So not only are they curious uh, about what your business is, but they kind of understand what your business is about. And finally, once they have an understanding, you want them to lead to, you want to lead them up to excitement. So they're excited about your idea. They want to hand you their money. So the question is, how do you move your investor along this path? We have three main pieces of advice for you. The first is to convey your idea. The second is to sell the benefit. And the third is to keep in mind that investors are not customers. We'll take these one step at a time. So first of all, convey your idea. You want to accurately portray what the status quo is and what the problems people are facing today and how your business aims to solve these problems. So as an example, Prosper's pitch goes, credit cards are a great way to spend money but a horrible way to borrow. And Prosper solves this problem by directly connecting lenders and consumers. Secondly, you want to sell the benefits, not just the features. So the features are what you put into your product. The benefits is what consumer derives from them. So as an example, when Steve Jobs first talked about the iPod, he talked about how one of the features was a skip-free uh, feature. And you as a consumer derive the benefit of being able to go hiking or jogging without worrying that your music skips. And finally, perhaps most importantly, you want to keep in mind that your investors are not your consumers. You spent a lot of time convincing customers why your product is the best, but for investors, they care more about the sustainability of the business model underneath and whether or not you can generate money. So to review, the three main ideas we're pitching to you today are one, convey your idea. Two, keep in mind that benefits sell, features tell. And three, keep in mind that your investors are not customers. So to bring it all home, please welcome Saurabh. So, for a moment, let's imagine six months down the line, for the entrepreneurs amongst us, we've already done the pitch. And we are multiple times gone through the grind, but eventually we have nailed it. And we have ended up with a shower of money over us. But the point here is, what did you do in the last six months which ended up in this result? And if you just look back to what we just did, we were not just presenting you how to pitch, we were actually pitching you the idea itself. So Gabrielle took us through the market, which is the students here, and the problem, which is the desire or the ability to pitch. Carl showed us what the idea is and how we can communicate that. And Jan told us the competencies of our team, our camaraderie, and our shared values. So these are the three main things that you would want your investor to walk away with. As you take them on the journey to excitement, <laughs> they leave the room after your presentation super excited and with these three things nailed into their heads. And why is that important? Because the investor you're pitching to is only your primary audience. But just as important is your secondary audience, which is their investment committee. Because the investment committee will decide whether you get the second chance or not. And that depends on how well your primary investor is able to communicate your ideas to the investment committee. So to drill home the point, you would want your investor to walk away with three main topics or points from your pitch. One is the market, which is the problem and the growth potential. Second is the team, the great competencies, the diversity, and the camaraderie. And third, is the idea itself and how unique it is and what benefits it provides. So take it home from here. We'll take all questions from here on. Thank you so much. <laughs>